Hello everybody, welcome to Erndale's. My name is Dale, thank you very much for joining me. Um, today I'm doing a little bit of a follow-up video on a video that I did 10 months ago that has really um, had a lot of interest in it. I've had so many comments, thank you very much for all the beautiful comments as well. I've had so many comments and questions and so I just thought that um, I would take it a little bit further with that video. The video that I'm talking about is the Tunisian blanket that I crocheted using an Af a double-ended Afghan hook. Now, um, I did that blanket quite a few years ago and I explained all that and I'm gonna put an I card here so that if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go back and watch that video. And on that video, I used a double-ended hook and I started with one color and you pick up another color and you sort of weave it through. And the main stitch that you use in that video is actually just a slip stitch. You're just slipping the yarn through the loop. And I just started another project, not with that technique at all, but it reminded me so much of that, that I thought that I'm gonna share this with you because this is another way of doing much the same thing, but only you can use a regular crochet hook. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. If you're a crocheter and never have been a knitter, this might be one technique that you can actually do that looks so much like knitting. I guess this falls under the crow knit or knit crow um, category, but really it is a crochet stitch and it's actually one of the oldest and simplest crochet stitch that has ever been around. Years ago, long before, there was double crochet and single crochet and half double crochet. There was just a slip stitch. And that is what we're going to do. It's just a ordinary slip stitch and that's all you're doing. The difference is how you slip the stitch, which loop you slip the stitch in makes a totally different stitch each time. So I'm going to show you what I started and I'm going to show you the the stitches and how much like knitting stitches they actually use and then I'm going to show you how to do it. So I bought a pillow form quite a long time ago. Uh, another video that I had where I had I was talking about a sweater that my mom had made me. It was beautiful fisherman knit sweater that ne that didn't fit me anymore and at one point I was going to turn it into a pillow. Bad. But since that video, I have actually rehomed it to a great niece who wears it a lot and loves it. And so that's really good because I really didn't want to do that. So I bought a pillow form for that sweater. I was going to cut it up and make a pretty pillow with, with that sweater. And I've never used that pillow form. And the other day I thought, you know, I have to, have to make something to cover that pillow form and actually use it. So I started making a slip cover for it. Now, this is the stitch. And there went the needle. This is the stitch. That's the front side of the stitch. And this is the back side of the stitch. Now, if you're a knitter, you could recognize that very much like a knit stitch. And it is very much like a knit stitch. So you could actually use this side or you could use this side. I am using this side because I think it is gorgeous. And this is only done with a slip stitch. Now I've made a pocket and I'm going around and around and around. And all I'm doing is I'm slipping the stitch, but I'm always slipping the same type of stitch the same loop and in this case I'm slipping the what am I slipping I'm slipping the front loop not the back so all of the slip stitches are done on the front loop and that is making this now if I decided to change and start going in the back loop these would all look the same but they would go in the other direction so you can kind of make a different 
uh, pattern by going like if I did five on the front and five on the back, it wouldn't look like this. There would be a line and this and the stitches would start to go in the opposite direction. But the other thing is, if I wasn't doing it in the round like this, if I was just doing a flat piece, I could work the front stitches all along and in one color, pick up another color and turn it and work those stitches all along the front turn it so you could you could actually make like a brocade out of it and i will show you that coming up but first i'm going to show you a close-up of this and how i actually do the slip stitch so i'm just li li using some leftover um yarn that i had this is a, a worsted weight acrylic and I'm using a size K hook. And I have, like I said before, I've made a pocket of this. So I am just crocheting in the front loop of each stitch around. Now, there's one thing that you have to do with this type of crochet, and that is you have to be really, really loose with your, with your tension. I am a tight knitter and a tight crocheter, and this is very difficult for me to do a loose stitch, believe you me, but it's imperative. You can, you can really run into a lot of trouble when you don't have a loose stitch. So here's the two stitches here, the two loops. I'm just going into the front loop, hooking over, pulling through. Front loop hooking over, pulling through, and that's all I'm doing. And I'm just going to go around. See, this one's kind of tight. Nope, I don't want two loops, I only want one. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to keep going around and around and around until I have the height of the pillow that I want. Isn't this beautiful? Like, I love this stitch. It's like... Um, honeycomb and it's very much like the stitch that you get when you do that other um, the Tunisian reversible blanket that I was talking about earlier you only want the front loop all the way around and keep it very very loose I don't know if that's because of the size of this hook that I'm using. I think it might be, um, but I wanted a, a bigger stitch. That's why I'm using this big. I think if you had a smaller uh, hook, that the tension issue might not be quite as great. So that's as simple as this stitch is, and it is beautiful. And here's the back side. See what I mean by it looks very much like a knit stitch. Well, it is a knit stitch, really. Both sides are just as nice. Now you can do garments like this. You can make, if you made a hat out of this technique or pair of mittens, it would be just like the same results. You'd get the same results if you were doing a double knit. The exact, it'll be nice and thick and warm. In fact, I'm going to make myself some mittens using this technique because it is very thick. It is a double knit is what you're doing. It's a lovely texture. Of course, if you used finer yarn and a smaller needle, you'd get a much thinner piece. It wouldn't be as heavy or as thick. But um, for this purpose, this is what I'm using. Now I'm going to show you what I meant about making a brocade with two colors. And that's as easy as this is. And it's so adapt adaptable to so many projects. You could do um, blankets, you can do scarves, hats, mittens, pillows, anything, really, it's lovely. So I'm gonna grab um, a couple of different colors and we'll see what we can do 
with making a two colored piece. Okay, here's the little piece that I've been playing around with. And if you can see on the front, it looks very much like a knit. And on the back, you're starting to get that little bit of a brocade look. Now, I haven't quite figured out. I cast on 12 stitches of the blue and I, I did two rows in the back stitch, in the back loop, just slip stitch in the back. And then I, I picked up the red and I did two rows. You pretty much have to do two rows and I'm changing color always on the same end. So I'll show you what I'm doing. So I've got one more row of blue. No, I'm picking up the red here because I'm at the end. So I'm just going to pick up my red. I'm going to run it underneath. I'm going to make that stitch a lot smaller. And I'm just going to pick up the hook, slip it through. And now you're going to pick up the back stitch. The back stitch are, are running all along here, along the back. Not this one here, but that one back there. That's the one you want to do your your stitch in. So right there. Of course, this, this is really bad yarn anyway. It's all fuzzed out. And that's not what I want. I just want one of them. There we go. Pull it through. And then go all the way around. See what I mean about tight stitches? keep those stitches loose. I'm having problems because I didn't do that. Do as I say and not as I do. Sometimes if you angle your hook, you can pick it up easier. Okay, now I'm going to chain one. I'm going to turn and I'm going to go over here and pick up the back ones. So you're making a really, you're making a double, just like double knitting, exactly the same thing that happens when you do a double, when you do a slip stitch, double knit, you get this same double. It opens up the stitching line. That's what it does. If that makes any sense, I don't know. Okay, so we're at the end. So here we go. This is what I've got so far. And at the back, you can see it's starting to do, there's your first two rows and now it's brocading. So if you wanted to now change to another color, this is where you would do it. You would put another color in here and pick up these back row of stitches. I'm just going to do another one of the blue. So we're going to pull it around behind and we're going to slip that through there. Just pull this a little bit, not much. And now we're going to pick up these back stitches with a slip stitch all the way across. Keep it loose. That's the main thing. And this isn't exactly like that double-ended hook, but it's, it's almost producing 
the same effect as that. And um, it's certainly producing the same thickness of the project. So there you just keep on going, going and you have this on one side and you have this on the other side, which is exactly how that other one was. The charm with this is um, if you wanted to do a blanket, you know, you could you could cast on however many stitches wide you wanted and you don't have to have everything on the hook at one time. So there's another little way of achieving almost the same thing. Now getting back to that, um, that double ended hook, I don't know if I said in the that video, but mine is 14 inches long. And um, there has been a lot of comments on that video about not being able to find them. I actually don't know where you can find them. That hook that I have, I have two of them. One is a smaller gauge. Um, they were my mother's and so I, I didn't purchase them. I've had them for years. I know um, Amazon does have them, but some people are saying they're like only a six inch hook, which isn't gonna get you very far. So that's sort of why I'm showing you this. And if you have questions, please comment below. I'll see if I can um, help you with it, but it is doing the exact same thing as the other was. Uh, with with a single hook. The other thing that I would suggest, if you are lucky enough to have a yarn shop in your community or close by, that's where I would start. You're not going to find them at a place like Walmart or, you know, like a super kind of store that has a little bit of everything. Um, but if you have a, if you're lucky enough to have a yarn shop, I would, I would say go in there and ask them if they have sources that they could order one in for you. Um, like I said before, mine are, I have two different sizes. One is, I don't know what size it is. The size is actually worn right off, but it's probably about this size. This is a J or a US 10. I don't know what the millimeter is on it. It might be a little bit, no, it's about this size. And the other one is more suitable for a thinner yarn like um, DK, or uh, even baby yarn and it makes a nice softer blanket so there you go this is working with two yarns and making like a little brocade and this is working with one yarn in the round i love this this is just a gorgeous gorgeous and there's the back side of it So I hope you enjoyed this and um, please give me a comment, ask me questions. I'll see if I can help you in any way I can, but certainly it's something that is very easy. It's just a slip stitch. Keep your stitches very loose or you're going to have. And the other thing is if you're, if you start your project picking up the back loop, always pick up the back loop. If you start your project picking up the front loop, always pick up the front loop. That's the that's the thing. You have to start the project with either the front or the back and stick with it. If you change, it will change the look of this. But you can fool around with that too and see. But if you want something like this, always keep your stitches in the same loop, either back or front. It doesn't matter which one, as long as you always use the same one. So I hope you enjoyed this and um, I'm looking forward to any comments and questions that you might have about this. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Um, my contact information is in the description below. Um, I'm always here to help you in any way I can. Um, leave me a comment and I'll get right back to you, I promise. So this project, I just started this and I don't anticipate that I'm going to be um, spending a lot of time working on it right now. I have a lot of things on the go at the moment, but I've been picking this up when I just feel like just doing something mindless. This is what I'm going to be working on. This is going to be, like I said, for a pillow form. And my intention is to make it like an envelope. So it'll be, you know, as big as the pillow and then it's going to have a flap 
over top with some buttons along it. So that's what this is going to be someday. Uh, don't expect to see it anytime soon because it might. But then again, maybe I'll decide to just plug along with it and, and actually get it done. We'll see. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and like and share my videos if you are so inclined. I really do appreciate your support and I really love your comments. It is so nice to to connect with you and talk to you and converse with you. It's something that really um, is so enjoyable for a YouTuber to actually have contact with their viewers. So thank you so much and good luck with your slip stitch crochet. We'll see how you go with this one. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye for now.